Talhurst End podcast. By Reading fans, for Reading fans. Hello and welcome to the Tyler Stone Podcast Extra in association with the Working and Paper for today, March the 15th. My name is Ollie Allen, your host as ever for today's show. I'm delighted to be joined once again by the Working and Paper's Tom Crocker. Morning Tom, how are you? Morning Ollie, not too bad, thank you. Yourself? I'm as well as a Reading fan can be um, in our current run of form, Tom. Yeah, quite just about right. Still, still waiting for that win to talk about. I think still one win in 17 in the league now. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's another struggle again and uh, two more disappointing results, I think, this week. We will get straight into those games. Now we'll start with the Leeds game um, at the weekend. It was a 2-2 draw, of course, um, against Leeds United United at the Madstad last Saturday. And we'll touch on it briefly, Tom, to get your thoughts on it. Um, Mark and Sim reviewed it in more detail um, on the main show earlier in the week. So go back and listen to that if you haven't already. But how do you think this one uh, went for Reading? Tom, obviously, they appeared to start fairly brightly with John Daly by Varson um, opening the scoring on 16 minutes. But then... Two goals from Leeds saw a head drop a little bit, but then you you know Kane's own goal meant Reading took a point. Was it a fair result for you? Um, it's just but both both managers sort of felt they could have won it. Really, I think the first 40, 45 minutes, well, forty minutes really, Reading were, were really good. It's the best I've seen them play really at home for a number of months, and they would have been kicking themselves really to not be further ahead. Obviously, they, they got that goal and should have been two or three up really. Mo Barry missed a great chance. George Evans nearly scored as well. And at that point you were thinking maybe this is the sort of turning point they've been waiting for. They're playing really well. And yeah, they just give away two sloppy goals like you say. And suddenly they're, they're behind and they've got to try and find a way back into it. Um, to their credit, they did get straight back in, got got it level again. And after that, it sort of the, the game sort of died a little bit and Leeds were the ones who were pushing towards the end and felt that they could have won the game. So in the end, you have to take the point. But it was, uh, yeah, it felt a bit disappointing because it's as, as positive as that first half performance was those are the sort of games you've got to be winning really and to come away with, with just a point again and still waiting for that first win and just slowly ticking off the points rather than picking up the three that they, they really should have done it was yeah so I think people left the stadium fairly positive again because it was another decent performance but obviously after the, the what happened on Tuesday you look back at it and think there was a, maybe another opportunity missed on, on Saturday with the form that Leeds winners were, I think we could. It, 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 it was very much sort of a, a bit like a derby again. There were there were moments of sort of um, promise from Reading, but then ultimately it was um, defensive um, at the back that sort of let them slip. And ironically, two of Reading's best players in the game were sort of two of their most underperforming players this season. Um, Pella Clement and, and, and Sonny Luke, obviously the latter getting the wonderful three ball assists for John Daly Board of Arsenal's goal. It certainly it was good to see some promise from those two, wasn't it? Yeah, I think Luca has obviously been been struggling, and it's now sort of hiding that fact. But the problem is, there is no other options as we discussed last week. He's, he's got to sort of play every game, and yeah, fair play to me. He, he looked pretty lively, and obviously he's, he's, he often shows little bits of skill. But this is the end product that you need from him, and he picked out the assist for the first goal and set out Bakuna for the second one as well. So yeah, he played a key role in both goals, and it was, yeah, it was one of his his better performances. And as for Clement, he's obviously been in the team for a few weeks now, all all around the team really, but. Playing in midfield, he looked he looked good on the ball and looked dangerous. And I think he got subbed off in the second half, and then it sort of the performance sort of dipped after that, which um, maybe something to look at. Because obviously he's he's been in the starting lineup for a few games now, and he, he looked pretty good. Yeah, so from those two, it's this promising signs. But like you say, it's, it's at the back where the problems are really. Absolutely, obviously Clement and Luca both started again then at Modern on Tuesday, um, but couldn't replicate their good performances. Indeed, no Reading player uh, really impressed at all as the Roars fell to a three 0 defeat to the Championship leaders. Uh, the goals coming from Matt Doherty, who scored twice, and former Reading Lonely Benica Fobe. Now, uh, but obviously, both, both me and you, Tom, we both predicted um, defeats Reading, and um, I'm sure nearly every every Reading fan thought we would probably get beaten at Modern New, but it was the manner of the defeat um, that was so disappointing. Obviously, we failed to reg- register a single shot on target in the entire game. Uh, I think we only managed two um, shots in total um, throughout the game as well, um, which in my view is completely um, unacceptable. And obviously, some of the defending was, was absolutely woeful as well. As, as it has been for the majority of the campaign, and 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 to me, Tom, it certainly it almost seemed as if Reading went into the game thinking that they'd already lost it. Yeah, like you say, it was the poor defending yet again, and yeah, like you say, people sort of ex- expected to go up there and maybe not get anything out of it, despite Wolves' recent form. It's it's always going to be a difficult game. You just want to show, hope they show a little bit of a fight to try and take something into the weekend. And yeah, the, the first goal, as I say, until sort of forty minutes, they either managed to keep them out. I think Yakola made a, a decent save early on, and. They held them out, it looked like they were going to get to half time, but again they conceded just before half time, which has been a problem in recent weeks. It was a, uh, yeah, I don't know where Yakola was going, chasing after a cross, and then just left Dirty Free in the middle to head it in. And yeah. second goal as well, I think keeper's got to take some thought. I don't, I don't, I don't think he should ever have been coming for that ball really, but as soon as he made the decision to run out for it, 
Tyler Blackett stops and then it's just a mix up and they, they work it well and finish it well for your Fobe but yeah I think it might it might be time to have a look at the goalkeeper issue again I don't think Nicola's done much to, to convince that he should be taking the number one spot really I don't think Maloney was too was as bad really when he was playing so it seems to instill a bit of um, yeah, a bit, a bit of worry amongst the back line when he's playing unfortunately in the last couple of games and he's had a few nervy moments obviously at Leeds nearly gave away that goal right at the end as well and yeah, the third goal was a n- nice move and finish, but I think the game was pretty much done by then. Like you say, Reading were, weren't showing anything going forwards, and it was just a heavy defeat and one that sort of left, left Stam again frustrated that his, his side haven't really shown anything going forwards. And yeah, poor defensive errors, and combine those two, and you're in, you're in a lot of problems. And Reading is still still very much looking over their shoulders. I think. How do you think Yap Stam views the goalkeeper situation? Then Tom, obviously, we mentioned there, Anthony Colas up the last three games against Bolton, Leeds, and Wolves, and. Did make a couple of errors at Molyneux, obviously flapped um, at the ball for the first goal and was caught in no man's land for that one and then hesitated about coming out for the second goal. And obviously, as we mentioned as well, the he sort of nearly nearly gave the ball away that, that nearly led to a goal at least at the weekend. Do you think do you think possibly it is time to um, get Manone back in between the sticks? I think there's every chance of that, yeah. I think he, he just looks across his whole team, obviously, for that that Bolton game made wholesale changes and decided that goalkeeper was one that he wouldn't wanted to change as well. He wanted to give Yukola a bit of a chance, which I suppose is fair enough. Obviously, Maloney has made a few errors, but um, I think three, I think it would have been a bit harsh to just put Yukola in and drop him straight out again. You have to give him a little bit of a run. He's given him three games, and I think he's he's looked a bit nervy on, on the ball and just in general play as well. He's made a few good saves, in fairness to him, towards the end of that Wolves game, but obviously the game was sort of dead already by then, and he's he makes he made a couple of decent saves against Leeds, but I think... I think Manoni just he's just a bit more experienced at this level, and I think the defence just sort of they have a better understanding really with Manoni and goal. So if not for this weekend, obviously there's a bit of a break after this game, so maybe they'll look at it then. But yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Manoni came back in on Saturday. Well, the defending in general was was pretty horrendous, and this has sort of become more and more of an issue. I mean, recent mm-hmm. weeks, and obviously Wolves at the top of the league, and obviously they are the top scorers in the league as well. But they could and probably should have had more than three goals. And um, you could actually make up a smart stops as well. So. And we spoke a couple of weeks ago, Tom, about how this wasn't actually so much so much of an issue at the start of the season, but sort of since December time, the back line seems to have forgotten how to defend completely. And we've um, kept just one clean sheet in the last 18 league games. And what is the problem here, Tom? Is because a team managed by one of the greatest centre-backs of his generation should be some sort of master at coaching and defending. But is it is it a confidence issue? Um, is it the relationship between the defenders isn't too great? Is it due to the injuries, sort of likes of um, McShane, um, Tommy Elphick and Omar Richards being injured recently? Do you think it's um, time to perhaps give Tom Holmes another chance? Um, possibly. I think Yap sort of suggested he would have been in, and he's left him on the bench for the last couple, so I'm not too sure if, if, if that will be on the cards really. But yeah, I think in terms of him being obviously one of the greatest defenders, when he came in, he, he said straight away he was a, an attacking coach. And I think he's more of the, the Dutch philosophy of attacking football rather than looking at his own defending but yeah it's, it, is a, it is a valid point and the main problem with the defence in recent months has just been individual errors which I'm not sure you can put entirely down to coaching really he doesn't tell them to give the ball away all the time and obviously it's, 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 it does come back to the manager essentially because he's brought these players in but yeah it's, it's just poor poor errors on, on the ball from a lot of them and letting their men go and, and things like that really so it's yeah that, that's been the problem in recent weeks like you say the, the injuries as well you, you'd you'd love to have McShane or Elphick in there um, just for a bit of experience and I think they as soon as they're fit again they'll come back into the side which will hopefully steady things up a little bit so they, I think it's been a, a bit of a combination of, of, of a lot of them really he's tried all his defenders he's given them all a chance and none of them seem to be able to to put it together and so, so in this situation you, re, you really want a settled back line I think that's the that's how you set up victories and with clean sheets and duty with the same back four. And I can't remember the last time they sort of named the same back five uh, consecutive games. Now it's been quite a while. He keeps chopping and changing, and it doesn't seem to be helping really. It's just, yeah, like I said, it's mainly it's just individual errors that are, that are costing them. And yeah, well, when they're when they're giving away two or three goals a game, it's very hard for them to win any games. And that's I think that's the main reason why it's gone so long now without without picking up a win. The result means Reading have of course finally moved from 18th position. Um, we've been talking, speaking for ages about how they constantly seem to be in 18th but they have um, unfortunately gone down rather than up and they now sit in 19th um, on 36 points then that that is still a six point gap um, from the relegation zone which sort of baffles me considering how bad we've been uh, it's one win 17 games if we're still keeping track and uh, I'm amazed we're not close to the bottom three but I suppose that's probably more of an indicator of how terrible Burton, Birmingham and Sutherland have been this season Yeah I think if you look at it there's a lot of draws at the moment all the teams around Reading are drawing with each other and yeah, I think this time last week we were running with five points clear and now they're six points clear. So 
you can look at that as a positive maybe but I think the, obviously the fixture list is a bit daunting for Reading as well with a lot of difficult away games and they've got to get away from this bottom three as quickly as they can really and yeah they, they say they've dropped a place I think Hull have won a couple of games and pulled themselves out of it and I think in terms of Hull I think they had sort of a similar sort of run one way in 17 now they've won back to back so it can be done um, but yeah like you say I think the the main reason at the moment they're, they're out of there is down to the failings of others really rather than anything Reading are doing because they say that they're not picking up any wins and just slowly picking up draws every now and again it's, it's, it's just not really um, not really helping them pull pull much clear, and they're just sort of in the mercy of the others really at the moment. A bit more positive news um, them, and so yeah, as as has been the case in most recent weeks recently, there's not an awful lot of Reading related news to talk about. But this week did see the um, release of Reading's financial report for the last year, uh, revealed by Companies House, and we won't go massively into detail um, with this, so it's not too complicated. But the key things to take away from it is that Reading's debt increased uh, from just under seventy million pounds to now around fifty four million pounds, which. Uh, we also made a 4.5 million profit from the 2016-17 season. Um, the decrease in debt has been helped by an increase in turnover and media revenue, um, whilst players' salaries have also decreased. And certainly, Tom, in a, in a truly rotten season, it's a superb piece of good news from the club and sort of shows that they are at least heading in the right direction financially um, under the new owners. Yeah, absolutely. I think, see, had they won the penalty shootout, it would have changed it massively and been the Premier League. But um, yeah. but yeah, you look at it, they came in to try and steady the ship and say try and reduce these debts. And there's a lot of questions around sort of January time as whether there's any money to bring anyone in. And at the end of the day, as a business, they've got to try and, try and reduce the debts and, and keep the money flowing. And yeah, like you said, it's, it's great news about that. It has come down, um, and, and saying it in a otherwise rotten season, as you put it, it's, it's, it's some some sort of positive news that they are at least off the field. Things are, are moving in the right direction, and a massive part of that is, is staying in this league now. That's that's what they've got the focus has got to be. If they go down, then that will change it massively. I think, and it'll be a as we said before, it'll be a, a massive problem for this club. I think if they were to drop down, because um, I'm not sure the owners would be be too keen to, to stick around for that sort of eventuality they, they want to be in the Premier League not not two leagues away from it so yeah it's a big few months on the pitch but that will then translate to off the pitch and these sort of numbers and I think yeah these next few months will will play a massive part into what what those figures obviously look like this time next year but um, yeah it's, it's positive news and it's we'll take any sort of positive news we can get at the moment I think absolutely yeah and we should have a um, full analysis of the financial report on a Tyler stand in so keep an eye out for that we will move on then now to the trip to Carrow Road this weekend of course the place where Reading lost 7-1 last season and we won't talk about that much because that's the last thing we need right now um, although it probably would see the end of the upstand 7-1 defeat so um, Norwich currently sit 14th um, in the championship table on 48 points um, so very, very much a middle of the road team and um, they're not going up they're not going down and they haven't actually won any of their last seven games but all the teams we played recently, Tom, haven't seemed to be in great form and that hasn't made an ounce of difference. Yeah, I was going to say that. It seems every week we're saying it's a good time to play yeah. these teams and <laughs> still can't get the wins. But um, yeah, I think yeah. It, it, is a, it is something to, to look at positively. I think the last four games they've played teams below them or in and around running in the table and they haven't won any of them. I think they've drawn them all. So yeah. that, that's something to, to look at. But um, but yeah, they're still in better form than Reading are. So it's, they'll, still, they'll, yeah. they'll certainly look at it and, and see it as a chance to to get those to get those points and yeah they'll see that the middle of the road so you're never entirely sure what you're going to get from them but you you think that maybe in front of their home fans they'll play with a bit more freedom knowing that there's not too much to play for and they're playing for places essentially so yes yeah, it's, it's, it's one that Reading should be going there thinking they can get something from though just purely based on the fact Norwich aren't aren't winning any games either um so I think it was similar with Leeds last week and I ended up in a draw and yeah, Reading really just need to need to get that win, and I think if you look at the, I think they've still got three of the top four to play away from home. So this is one of the away games you look at and think that no, they should be getting something from. But Norwich has still got some good players. You say they've still got some of those Premier League players from a couple of years ago, I think, and they've also got the the new manager in, who's um, obviously did, did well for them in the cups and, and what have you, and seems to be building something there slowly. But um, yeah, they're they're desperate for a win, similarly to Reading, so. It won't be it won't be straightforward. No, no games are straightforward for Reading at the moment, but it's it's one that maybe if you look at the Norwich's form, maybe this could be the week that they turn it around. But um, we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, the meeting between the two sides early in the season was a two-one defeat for Reading, um, live on Sky. Um, one of Norwich's goal scorers that afternoon was James Madison, who I think is an excellent young talent. Um, he's 21 years old and he's got 12 12 goals and six, six assists already this season. Has been linked with a move to the Premier League, and I hardly think he'll be a Norwich player next season, Tom. But right now, he's certainly probably one of the biggest threats isn't he along the likes of Josh Murphy and um, 
Nelson yeah, Oliveira, who of course was um, linked with Reading in the summer. Yeah, so they've got some, some some good young players in there, and obviously they're not going to go up now. So people will, will start taking a look at them. Um, I'm trying to remember that goal from the previous game. Actually, I remember the Cameron Jones header for the winning goal. Obviously, he's not there anymore. Um, but but yeah, as I say they've they've got they've got some good players in there, and if they turn up on the day, I think they drew with Wolves a couple of weeks ago, and they say they haven't been losing many games recently, so they've. They've been just picking up a lot of draws. They had that crazy game of Hull, I think, 4-3 they lost as well. So they've certainly got goals in them, but they're vulnerable at the back a little bit at times as well, which you've got to hope. I think that's I think that's Reading's best way forward at the moment is to try and outscore teams. So I don't think they've really got a great defence to, to try and build something on. Um, obviously, as they say, there'll, there'll be a lot of memories back to that 7-1 and they've got to try and put things right a little bit from that. But... Yeah, Norwich have got some good young players and they've got plenty of goals in them and it's it's got the potential to be quite a, an exciting one, I think. As for Reading then, um, things aren't looking great on the injury front. We saw Chris Martin and Liam Kelly uh, both miss the trip to Wolves. You, what was the problem with them? And are we expecting to see them back this weekend? I think it was an ankle injury for Liam Kelly. I don't think there's a sort of diagnosis just yet on how bad that is. Um, okay. Chris Martin was ill on the, uh, the weekend, pulled out on the morning of the game against Leeds and then was subsequently out again on Tuesday so you'd imagine um, he'll be working back to fitness for this weekend if he, if he can get back on the side obviously Kerr McGowan was back on the bench on Tuesday as well um, but there's yeah there's a, a lot of guys still missing and John Swift will probably come back in this weekend I think Yap said he, he just can't play midweek games at the moment which is obviously a worry but he's they're still not willing to risk him for the midweek games even though he's only playing sort of 20 minutes as a sub at the weekends but yeah, so he'll he'll probably come back into the at least the squad on Saturday. Also, got a bit of a break after this one, so you, you might maybe you'll see him start the the game or at least play a bit bit of a bigger role. But um, in terms of the rest of them, it's yeah, there's still a few long term guys. I think we'll see McShane Elphick still out, but should hopefully be back after the break. And yeah, as as part of that, it's going to be a sort of similar squad to Tuesday. There's a lot of youngsters on the bench as well, so maybe a couple of them will will, will get a bit of a chance at some point. But it's uh, yeah, the injuries have been a problem all season, and it still still seems to be a bit of a problem now as well. I was going to mention that actually, obviously we saw Tom Holmes, um, Sam Smith, Andy Ridamota and Daniel Loda all included in the matches squad at Molyneux, which is great to see um, four young lads coming through um, the academy and, and, and making the squad. Do you think we can see them involved again at the weekend? Yeah, like I said, I think um, you'd imagine John Swift will come back and probably Chris Martin, so that will maybe drop a couple of them out. You, you'd probably say Ridamota and Loda, you'd, you'd imagine. But, um, but yeah, I think Smith came on the other night. Obviously Tom Holmes has played recently and... The, uh, essentially the guys in the first team aren't really performing at the moment so this, if, if he can give a youngster a chance to, he did it against Bolton so he, he may well try it again at some point obviously unless the other ones step up and, and get the goals or, or play well then there are spaces in that team up for grabs absolutely but um, in terms of this weekend I think he's more likely to probably bring back in Swift and Martin rather than chucking a couple of the youngsters you'd imagine Having talked about Norwich's threat a minute ago obviously um, actually only four teams have scored fewer goals than them in the championship this season but um with Reading and Shoddy defence, I'm, I'm not sure that's really that relevant. But um, for the Prediction League, then how, how do you see this one going, Tom? I'm, going, I'm probably going to have to go for another defeat, sadly. <laughs> um, I think uh, I'm also a bit annoyed that when we did the, the Wolves preview a couple of weeks ago, I said 3 0 and then changed it to 3 1 no. um, before, before this game. So I need to make up some points. I think I'm going to go for 3 1 again. Like I say, I think it's just the problems at the back are, are, are a big a big issue for Reading. So I can see Norwich getting at them and. I think Reading will probably score, but yeah, I'll have to go for a 3 1 Norwich win and hope some of the results around Reading go their way again. To go for a defeat, I'm going to go for 2 1, so a little bit closer, but I just think sort of, I think I think that defeat will certainly put on the minds, um, the defeat last season, sorry, will certainly put on the minds of the likes of Chris Gunter um, and Liam Moore in defence, and confidence is low anywhere at the moment. So, um, but yeah, as, as, we, as we have mentioned, they're, they're not in the greatest form, but um, neither will Leeds, and we, and, and we can only draw with them, but we will have to wait and see how it goes. As we come towards the end of the show then, Tom, what can we expect to see on the working and paper in the coming days? Yeah, like I say, it's pretty quiet on the Reading front, but there'll be a, a preview for the, the Norwich game up probably tomorrow. And then it's, like I say, a bit of a break, which um, unless something happens with the manager, you'd imagine it would be a pretty quiet one again. So, yeah, that's all eyes on, on Saturday, and that'll be up on workingandpaper.com, and we will put it up on Twitter as well, at Tom J. Crocker. Fantastic stuff. Thank you much once again for your company this week. Thanks, Ollie. Cheers. No worries at all. And of course, stay tuned to the Tyler and over the next few days as well. We too will have full pre and post match coverage of the trip to Carrow Road. Uh, whilst that aforementioned um, analysis of the financial report should also be a good read as well. Um, as mentioned, after Saturday's game, there is the international break, uh, which means no game for Reading the following weekend. And as a result, um, no podcast extra next Thursday. And um, it means we'll be back in two weeks' time uh, to preview the clash with QPR on Good Friday. 
uh, but there should be a main show early next week um, to look back on the game in Norwich. Um, Mark, I'm not sure who who will be joining, but Mark and someone else uh, probably out on Sunday or Monday. Until then, though, thank you very much for listening to today's show, and come on, you ours. Get social with the boys. Find them on Twitter at the Tarhurst End and Facebook.com forward slash the Tarhurst End.